Hi, today I'm going to show you how to knit this complete seamless curvy poncho with cable heart design and hood. Let's get started. Hi guys, same as usual, please check my description box for all the details, which is the yarn and needle I used and written pattern. This is going to be a long video and I want you to watch whole video first because here and there, lots of optional example you don't have to add hood you don't have to you know add wrist you know stuff like that so i really want you to watch the whole video and then make a plan ahead this is completely seamless and size adjustable you can knit any size you want this is top down sweater took me about 20 days to finish it because I really wanted to knit big, comfortable poncho. So takes a lot of, you know, time, but it was worth it. And I really love this big sleeves. And look at those wrists. I think this is a great idea. Because if it's cold outside and if you want to, you know, cover your hand, you can do it. And there's the opening for your thumb. So you can actually still use the finger. So if you want to grab something, it's, it's easy. You know, if you want to take a picture, you can do that too. And if you don't need it, you can fold it too. Isn't it awesome idea? These days, you really have to wash your hands very often, right? If it's just a big sleeve, it's really, you know, tough to wash, you know, your hand. So whenever you want to wash your hand, just pull the sleeve up like that, right? And then wash your hand, you know, put some, you know, disinfected gel or whatever, right? And after you wash your hand, just pull back down. This project is great for kids as well because it's very comfortable size. They can run around. I'm pretty sure they love it and you love it. Well, let's get started. Those yarns I used. Cast on multiple of six plus one. I made 91 and a lot of actually people ask me what size I needed and this time I'm not sure because I usually wear small sizes and I knit small size sweater and you know maybe medium sometimes but this time I made huge poncho so you know if the larger person want to wear it, they can do that too. So it's really up to you. After the cast, start in rib. This time, I'm not connecting both ends yet. This is right side. And starting with wrong side, so the rib should be repeat all purl one and knit one and last one stitch should be purl one and right side the other way around after the uh, the first row you just have to knit over knit stitch purl over purl stitch and you just have to repeat 
rule number one and rule number two until your desired length. I believe I needed it about three inch. Whenever you reach the desired length, now I'm going to connect both ends. And I would like to make whole stitch multiple of six. I started multiple of six plus one. So you just have to add five new stitch to make it 96 for me because 91 to start. So 96 is multiple of six. So I just add new five cast, then connect both ends. And before you move on to next, you know, step, I just knit two round with knit stitch. And first of all, let's connect both ends. And second knitting row, I want you to add markers. So I just actually connect. That's going to be the, uh, the front part. So I am going to add Biggie Marker, which is center of new cast. So, you know, five divided by two is, you know, two and three. So anywhere you want. This is first knitting row. Okay, I just knit first row of all knit, and this is going to be second time. I would like to explain all the, uh, the stitch marker means. The first of all, the yellow one, that's gonna be the uh, begin marker in the center of new cast. So two and three, or three and two, either way. And four orange marker and two green marker. And for now, forget about the green marker. Let me explain the orange marker. I would like to divide by front, back, and sleeves. So you have to kind of, you know, find your magic number. My magic number is the whole stitch, 96 divided by 6 is 16. 16 is my magic number. So both sleeves, 16 stitch each. And front and back, 16 times 2. Magic number times 2. So 32 stitch. Okay, that's how you divide it. One more time. Your magic number is whole stitch divided by six and sleeves, just magic number. So magic number times two is each side, both side. For me, 16, right? Because my magic number was 16. And front and back, magic number times two. That's why whole cast should be multiple of six so from the begin marker you have to count both way for me 16 and 16 become 32 the uh, the begin marker should be in the center of front piece okay that's why both way 16 16 for me for you magic number both way right and add two marker and then next 16 both side is sleep and rest of them should be back which is magic number times two what about green markers this is for hood if you're not gonna add hood forget about this but i am going to and if you do you have to find where you want to start and end and i am going to put those two markers just behind the, uh, the front piece, which means 
My hood is not deep enough to cover all my head, but I don't really like, you know, the hood touching my face. So if you really want to, you know, the cover all your head, you have to actually put hood, you know, a little bit more deeper. You know what I'm saying? And if you once prepare for hood, you have to. Do it, and you know what I mean at the end. So you gotta be very careful. Now you have to think whether you're gonna add or not. And what's in the second row? You have to prepare for hood. So let's start knitting on second row of on knit. And I just started. And the green marker. Whenever you hit the green marker, you have to prepare for hood. So I meet you at the green marker there. So it's just on it until green marker. And you need scrap yarn for preparation of hood. Well, and tapestry needle as well. Tapestry needle, no, no, just a scrap yarn, and long enough. There you go. This is still second row of all knit, and now you grab scrap yarn. Has to be contrast color. Okay, if you use same type of the 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 color, it's gonna be so hard. So I am going to use pink because it's much easy to see. First of all, you just have to knit between those two green markers where you want to put the hood, right? With contrast color of scrap yarn. So me to the other side of the hood marker. Again, once you prepare for hood, you're never gonna go back again. All right, so you gotta think. Okay, now this is the second marker for hood. So now you turn the work and transfer those pink yarn stitch back onto right needle. So you're kind of going back. Where you start, you know what I'm saying. This is actually wrong side. I'm facing to, and here comes transfer all the、uh, the hood stitch back. Then now turn around. You're facing to right side now. Then with working yarn, which is main yarn, you just have to knit and try. Nothing happened, all right. And you just have to finish this row all the way down to begin marker. And this is it. You know, I just knit all the way down to hood, and then come in to the begin marker. And now we start increasing and. Hard design as well. Again, those pink yarn you will use at the end whenever you want to knit hood. And again, once you you know prepared for hood, you never gonna you know say I don't want to do that because you already prepared and you will know why. And now. I would like to add two markers right in the center of front piece for heart design, and you need twenty stitch in between green markers. So count from begin marker and take twenty stitch and add two markers. I'm going to add. Heart design, front, 
piece, center of front piece. Okay? So, now you have to start, you know, the uh, heart design. Even though, you know, the begin marker is in the middle, you know, you don't want to start from the uh, begin marker. So, you kind of, you know, the first green marker is kind of new, you know, the begin marker. You know what I'm saying? From now on, I'm going to talk about two sections. One is heart design, front. And the other thing is increasing stitches for sleeve and back and front. So don't get confused. You need to get written pattern in front of you. And then watch video together. Again, forget about the real begin marker. First green marker should be current begin marker. Cable row number one. This is wrong side. It doesn't really matter right now because you're knitting in round, but you will know why I put the wrong side or right side. Anyway, row number one, purl four, knit 12 and purl four very straightforward nothing to worry about i am actually going to um take the uh, the real begin marker away because you're gonna get you know uh, confused later right and just keep doing and pearl four and after the uh, the uh, cable design section everything else is all knit except increasing okay increasing starts one last stitch before the marker so you have to knit until one last stitch before the marker and every marker same thing so now one last stitch and you are going to do make one right which is increasing pull the running thread like that with uh, right needle and hook on to left needle and v-shape at the front then knit one there this is make one right then knit one slide the marker and knit one again then now you have to do make one left using the running thread like that again and hook that way this time and V shape is at the back now. Now you're using back loop to knit. Kind of, you know, pearl wise, but you know, this is knit one. Okay, back loop. There you go. This is make one left. And now you're going to knit one last stitch before next marker. If you're on the increasing row, every orange marker you have to increase. Okay, there we go. This is the second marker. Knit one and one last stitch there. And using the running thread, pick up. And from the behind, pick up the running thread and make the V shape out front. Then knit front loop. This is make one right. Then knit one. Slide the marker and knit one after knit one pick up the uh, running thread and the other way around this time from the uh, front and make the uh, v shape at the back then use back loop to knit this is make one left and every you know uh marker you have to do this on increasing row number one okay so two more times and actually i put the begin marker on the first green marker which is you know cable marker right and increasing row number two is all knit so repeat increasing row number one and row number two until you your desired length you have to think two different movements 
increasing part, which is orange, and then cable part, which is green. Okay, so you really have to kind of, you know, the check which row you're knitting. All right, so cable row number two. This is right side. You don't really care whether right or wrong side yet, but later on, you know what that means. Anyway, uh, row number two, here comes cable knitting. Purl two to start and T4B, which is twist full back, and T means purl stitch kick in, okay? Purl stitch kicks in. So pick up two with cable needle and put at the back, and then knit first, knit two first, and then come back to cable needle, and then purl two. This is T4B, twist, full back. And then next is C4F, cable for front, no purl. So pick up two with cable needle and out front, then knit two from left needle, then Knit two from cable needle. No more purl because start with C, C, C4F. This is C4F. And now C4B. The difference is where you're going to put the cable needle after you pick up two stitch. Okay, so pick up two stitch. Then this time back because C4B. Then knit two from left needle, then come back to cable needle, then knit two from the uh, cable needle. And after this T4F, there you go again, pro stitch coming. So twist for front, pick up two and out front. Then now, Purl two first. Purl two from left needle. Then come back to cable needle and knit those two from cable needle. And after this, purl two. I wrote everything down in my pre uh, description box so. You follow that written pattern, you're never gonna, you know, uh, get confused. But you just have to be very careful because if you make a mistake, um, cable, you know, the knitting, uh, the design is gonna, you know, get ruined. Okay, so after that, you know, um, you follow my written pattern and I believe I'm going to see you on row number six because other, you know, the row, very straightforward. And then, you know, increasing row, you just, you know, have to repeat row number one and row number two. So it's, it's easy. There you go. Uh, cable row number six. Again, you know, cabling, the new technique coming so I'll show you how to do that. Pearl 2 and T3F. T which means pearl, you know, involving, right? So this time you have to uh, divide those three stitch T3 front. Pick up two and out front. Pearl one from left needle and come back to cable needle, then knit two, okay? You really have to, you know, remember how many, you know, stitch you're picking up and all that. And it's really tough to remember. That's why I wrote it down. Okay, this is T3F. And after T3F, purl three, knit four, and purl three, then T3B, 
B. Come in. Twist three back. Pro three. Okay, T three. B. Picking up one stitch. And put the cable needle at the back. And then knit two from left needle. Then purl one from cable needle. And this is it. I already show everything you need to know. So you can actually uh, knit rest of the uh, the rows. And I meet you row number, I believe, 10. Because that's the end of the, uh, the row for cable knitting. Super easy. Just follow my written pattern. So I just finished row number 10 for the uh, cable design. And you just have to repeat cable row number 1 to cable row number 10 until your desired length, which is almost end of this, you know, this poncho. Looks, you know, beautiful. After this, keep knitting. Two different parts you have to remember. First, cable design. Second, increasing. Okay? And when to stop, up to you. I gotta tell you something. I stop around the elbow area first. I hate it. I separate my sleeve and body and start knitting. And I tried it on. I look like I'm wearing my husband's sweater. You know, I look like I'm wearing just an extra, extra large sweater. That was okay, but didn't look like poncho. So when to stop, you gotta be very careful. So I redo it a little bit, you know, go back and add in more length. So I stop uh, pretty much just before my wrist, just above the wrist. So it looks much better. It looks more like a poncho. Now I want to separate sleeve and body part. And now you are actually looking at the, the, the pink yarn. Forget about it because this was actually security line for me because I was thinking maybe I'm going to redo it again. So anyway, uh, use the, uh, the pattern. Okay. And until the first orange marker. And whenever you hit the uh, first orange marker, your sleeve starts, right? So with your scrap yarn, you have to transfer all the uh, uh, sleeve stitch. And, you know, if you're on the, uh, the what is that, uh, increasing row, you have to increase. Okay? And you have to actually remember, you know, when you stop the uh, um, sleep, okay? This is actually increasing row. And transfer all the sleeve stitch onto scrap yarn, you know, all the way down to next marker right there there you go it's done and I'm not gonna you know uh, knit sleeves as you already know for a little while so I gotta finish the body parts first so tie the knot and leave it there and then you have to connect 
front piece and back piece again, which is actually very simple. So don't worry about it. You just tie the knot and leave it there. Now you can actually try it on after you separate the, uh, you know, uh, sleeve. And one thing, one more thing I should mention is that um, it was really hard to knit such a big, big, you know, the, you know, project because it's heavy, number one. And number two, my longest, you know, cable was 125 centimeter. I don't remember inches, but, uh, you know, it's long enough, but it was hard. Anyway, let's connect uh, front and, you know, back piece. Okay, keep the uh, one marker there and make sure, you know, uh, where is the, uh, the front end of the uh, stitch and first you know, a uh, back piece, stuff like that. So keep one marker and then just knit. And do you remember this was the uh, increasing row, right? So you have to increase. There you go. And make one left because left side of the, uh, the marker. There you go. So this is the reason why I said remember, you know, which uh, row you're on. So if this is the uh, the the rule, increase in row number two, you don't have to increase, you know, there, right? And you do exactly the same thing the other side. There you go. This is the other side of the sleeve. And I already, you know, transfer all the stitch, just like, you know, the other side. And I'm going to tie the knot. Then do the same thing, you know, the leave one marker there. And this is again increasing row, right? So slide the marker and then knit one and then make one left. You know, this is um, same, you know, thing. So I didn't want to show you everything because it's going to be way too long for video. So anyway, I knit, I did the make one left, make one right there. So slide the marker, knit one, and make one left. Again, if you're on the uh, increasing row number two, which is all knit, you don't have to do this. So it uh, it's, you know, depend on where you are. And this is, you know, coming back to front, right? There you go. And then just knit until your desired length and still increasing you know every other row okay the leave the uh, the sleeve okay next time for me it's just a uh, on it so again the around the orange marker row number one increase row number two on it and then the front still cable. So you must remember where you, you know, at, right? I think after this, I knit 10 more rows and then I am going to make shape, the curvy shape at the bottom, which is actually Japanese short row technique. That's what I used for carve, okay? And I didn't want to actually make big carve or anything because I already knit, you know, long enough, okay? So, first of all, you have to kind of separate, you know, back and front. And I am going to um, uh, do the, uh, the front piece first, which is cable, you know, design included, right? So... At the center of the sweater has to be, you know, uh, round and longer, and both sides is a little shorter. And here is the uh, the sweater I 
needed it before. And usually, people use short roll technique behind the neck. This is the back piece of the sweater, and there is little, you know,、um, carve after the rib, right? Can you see? Yeah, this is actually、um, short roll technique. So if you wanna, you know, knit、uh, kind of carve. Like this, and center,、uh, it will be longer than you know the both side. You should use this technique, and there's lots of technique: German short row, Japanese short row, you know stuff like that. And I am going to use Japanese short row this time, okay? And then there is math calculation in my description box, so you gotta check that out first. And one more important thing I have to tell you, the、uh, Japanese short roll. You have to start on right side of the、uh, cable knitting, so it's gonna be even number of roll. Okay, so let's do the、uh, calculation. Count front piece stitches. I have hundred forty eight. Hundred forty-eight minus twenty. Those twenty stitches are the cable design. So, hundred forty-eight minus twenty is hundred twenty-eight. And then now, I have to decide how many rows you wanna increase at the, you know, the longest part. So I decide twelve. So hundred twenty-eight divided by twelve. Is ten point six 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 something like that. So my magic number is ten. Okay, I'm gonna tell you one more time. Count stitch. You know now you have to separate. You know front and back. So front, how many stitch? Minus twenty, which is cable design divided by how many rows you wanna increase. That's your magic number. So if you wanna the increase more, fine. Just your magic number is, you know, less. And why I、uh, subtract twenty stitch for the、uh, cable design because I don't wanna make a、uh, very pointy at the you know the center of the、uh, the sweater. You know I kind of wanna have natural. You know,、uh, curve and around the、uh, the cable design, kind of you know, little straight line. You know, so doesn't have to be very pointy. If you don't understand about this math, just let me know. I will help you. So let's get started with Japanese short row. You need clip type of marker, and I'm going to use two different. Colors because it's easier for me to explain, right? And then,、uh, Japanese short row start with knit row. That's why you really have to know right side and wrong side. And then you know, this is knitting side, which is right side of the、uh, cabling. So I just finished the、uh, cable. Which is you know the cable knit inside, and come close to、uh, side marker right. You have to knit until ten stitch before the side marker. Okay, this is Japanese short row knit row one. So ten stitch from the、uh, the side marker. Turn around because you're knitting flat now. So this is wrong side, pro side. So yarn front because this is pro wrong side. Slip one pro wise like that. Then orange marker. There we go. Right on the、uh, the working yarn like that. Clip on, then 
start making pearl. So again, now you're knitting wrong side and soon cable section is coming, right? I have a cable pattern in flat in the description box. So now you have to use pattern in flat. Okay, so anyway, pearl, 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 cable design, and then when to stop 10 stitch before the side mark or the other side. This 10 stitches, which is my magic number. If your stitches, you know, uh, the magic number is different, you know, stitch number, that's the stitch number you have to use. Okay, so this is pearl. Finish the, uh, the cable design and I have to stop 10 stitch, which is my magic number, 10 stitch before the side marker. There you go, 10. And now turn around. And then the yarn back, because this is knit inside now, Slide one stitch, there you go, like that. And then now green marker. Clip on to working yarn. There you go. After that, you start knitting. Again, now you're facing to right side, so the Obviously, the uh, the cable design you're using should be right side of the uh, the row. And then, when to stop this time? Again, magic number, but not from the uh, the marker you add in previous row. Actually, from gap. Okay. Where's the gap? I'll show you. That's the gap. Because you stop and turn around, then start knitting. So there's going to be the uh, gap you created. So you have to count from that gap, not from the marker. Okay? So from 10, uh, sorry, 10 from gap. And right there. That's the where you stop this time. So uh, if you don't want to count, you can actually add some markers, but you got to be very careful because sometimes, you know, you go get confused and, you know, you turn around way too early, something like that. So you got to be very careful. Okay. So the first row, you have to actually stop 10 stitch from the uh, both side markers. And after that, you have to stop 10 stitch from the uh, gap okay here comes knitting knitting row number two this is the uh, japanese short row 10 stitch from the gap there we go then turn around and you do exactly same thing which is now you're uh, facing to wrong side, which is pearl side. So working yarn has to be front, right? And then slide the marker. And clip onto working yarn. This time, orange. You go then start making pearl all the way down and until 10 stitch before the gap and you just have to do back and forth and do you remember you know uh, how many rows I want to increase I said 12 so six green marker and six orange marker total of 12 that's 
the time you have to stop. So anyway, let's do that. I'm actually counting 10 stitch from the gap and I add, you know, marker there. That's the, the place I have to stop. There you go. Here it comes. Again, if you add markers like that, you know, you got to be very careful. Okay, don't get confused. There you go. Remove. And make sure. Turn around. And what do you have to do? You're facing to right side. So yarn at the back because knitting side. Slide one marker, oh, sorry, one stitch, and then add clip on marker on to the uh, working yarn and then start knitting. That's it. And you just do back and forth, back and forth. Now you get it. You got to knit back and forth, back and forth, and shorter and shorter. So mid part, you always come across. That's why mid part is, you know, longer than side part. Now I finish. Okay. Again, if you want more curve, like, you know, the longer length in center of the sweater, you should uh, add more you know, rows, which means that your magic number should be smaller number, like five, which means, you know, I'm going to increase 24, you know, rows, right? So you can actually make more curl. But for me, this is good enough. It's really up to you. All right. So now, Okay, you have to take those markers off, which means you create gap, right? Every time you turn around and knit in different, you know, direction, you create the gap. Now you have to close that gap. Okay, so you start with knit. So I am going to start knit row to close the gap. Okay, and the heart design, you still have to, you know, uh, keep continue. There you go. This is end of the heart design on right side. Okay, now let's start closing the gap. Okay, so knit until the first gap. You're not going to go back and forth. So you just knit until the gap. So there you go. Here's the gap. And now you pull the marker like that and hook onto left needle. Then remove the marker. Now you have an extra stitch and then next stitch with next stitch knit two together to close the gap there you go and then now knit until next gap do not stop when the 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 markers on Okay, one more. Okay, the gap is next. So, there we go, the gap. Pull the marker, hook onto left needle, and this is right side, knitting side. So, knit two together to close the gap. So, you just have to go until last gap every gap you have to close okay one more time knit until the gap 
one more stitch to go. There we go. And then pull the marker and hook onto left needle. This is the reason why you need to have clip marker. If you don't, you can use the uh, the tiny, you know, the scrap yarn, but it's going to be harder. Anyway, so you just have to do every gap. And then you have to do one more thing at the, you know, the very end. So here comes, you know, the there's two orange one, but uh, this is the last one. The other one is the uh, side marker. Anyway. So this is last gap, pull the marker, remove it, and knit it together. And now you have to actually go back to, you know, the wrong side, which means, okay, you have to turn the work again, right? Because you have to, you know, close the other side of the gap which means you will create gap there. So I am going to do last Japanese short row here. So just remember, I am creating, okay? One last Japanese row, there you go. There you go, and then make pearl all the way down to, you know, the pearl side of the, uh, you know, Japanese uh, short row gap. Okay, so which means you still have to use um, the flat pattern for design. That's got to be wrong side, right? So just you know, knit until the gap. So here comes, this is end of the uh, uh, heart design. And now, all pearl, right? So let's see. Same thing, just the, you know, different side. This is pearl side. So make a pearl until the gap. So pearl and one more pearl because the gap is after this. There you go. Now gap. Same. Pull the marker, hook onto the left needle, and now you're on wrong side, pearl side. So you just have to do pearl two together. One extra and one original and pearl two together to close the gap. Easy. So again, pearl until the gap. And as soon as you hit the, uh, the, the gap, same thing, pull the marker, create the uh, extra, you know, stitch. So with extra stitch and next stitch, you just have to pearl two together to close that gap. Same thing. So you just keep uh, doing same thing until last gap. And then you have to actually turn the work again, right? Now, you know, you're actually uh, doing for the front piece and then you get actually go to the back piece on right side and then do exactly same thing to create the car okay there you go this is the gap and pearl two together sorry so when you turn you create the gap again so let's see okay here it comes this is the last gap the pearl side. There we go. Pull the marker and pearl two together. 
And like I said, now you have to turn the work because it has to be right side, right? So let's turn around. I'm actually just telling you that, uh, you know, uh, don't just keep, you know, knitting on wrong side. You don't want to knit wrong side. There you go. Now you're facing the right side, and which creates the uh, gap. So there we go. Last Japanese short row clip on and then start knitting. And now the front piece is done. However, there's two additional, you know, Japanese short row, both sides, right? And then you will end it up, you know, close the gap. So don't worry about it, okay? So now you gotta pass that, you know, cable design and go to the, uh, the back piece. And before you go to the uh, back piece, there you go. This is the uh, the knitting side of the uh, the gap you create. Do you remember the last one? So do the uh, same thing. Whenever you reach the uh, gap, this is the uh, last one, right? Pull the uh, the marker. And then knit it together. And go to the uh, the back piece, okay. And what are you gonna do? You know the the other side of the uh, last, you know, the gap. You will end it up closed, so don't worry about it for now. So this is the uh, side marker, and you actually move on to the uh, back piece. And this is so easy because there's no cable, you know, uh, design. So you just go back and forth, back and forth. Now you do exactly same thing. What do you have to do? You just knit all the way down to pretty much the other side. But remember, 10 stitch, magic number stitch before the side marker, right? And then turn around and do same thing. And then, you know, wrong side, pearl, right? And 10 from the uh, the other side of the uh, side marker. And after that, you know, 10 stitch before the gap. And you just have to back and forth. And has to be 12 rows for, for me. There you go. So now 10 stitch from the uh, side marker. So again, you just have to do back and forth and, you know, after that, close the gap, same thing. And the last, you know, the gap you closed, you still have to turn around and then turn around, which means you create the, uh, the gap. But don't worry about it. Uh, ended up, you turn the work and facing to right side and going back to biggie marker and then knit one more round, then you can actually close the gap. And I'll talk about that now. Here comes. This is pearl side, wrong side, and last gap. You have to close. There you go. So what do you have to do? Pearl until gap, Pull the marker, remove the marker, and this is pearl side, so pearl two together. So you close the gap. And now you have to face to right side, right? Don't keep knitting on wrong side. You must turn and then go back to right side, which means you will create gap here right and don't worry about it you will close this gap too 
but a little bit different. Anyway, there we go. And knit. This is still back piece. So you go all the way down to the other side and you have the last, last gap the other side. And you have to close, which is, you know, knitting side, right? Do you remember? And that's the begin marker. Now you're trying to go back to begin marker, but there's, you know, the last gap there and then the other side as well okay then the the difference is now you're facing to knit side so the orange is you know same as before knit two together but the green marker supposed to be pearl so it's a little bit different okay the orange was knit inside, so knit two together. Green, supposed to be pearl two together. So it's a little bit different. And you know what I mean later when you look at the uh, stitch. Okay, so uh, let's do that. Y you better, you know, see. And if you don't like this idea, you can actually skip it you know you just have to turn the work and then you know tiny bit of the uh, gap there but you know nobody is gonna mad at you you know because it's a little bit tiny hole so anyway there you go this is knitting right the orange marker and you're facing to knit side so hook the uh, the one extra stitch and knit it together and now you got to go back to begin marker, so pass the uh, side marker, right? And after the side marker, there's got to be uh, the gap. Now, green gap, uh, the green marker, which means supposed to be pearl. So you got to see where the, the marker and gap it's actually the other side. Now you have gap first and then marker. You know, supposed to be you pass the, uh, the marker, then gap, right? But this time, the other way around. You know why? Because the green marker, you're facing to wrong side and now you're facing to the right side. So slip this stitch, and then, this is kind of awkward, pull the, uh, the, the marker and hook on to the uh, left needle. Right? And then the one stitch you slip put back on sandwich between you know the gaps and then knit two together there we go and this is a little bit tight but you know just be careful take your time you know don't be in a rush you know what i'm saying so the gap was actually after the marker but now you're looking, you know, from, you know, different angle. So now gap first and then marker. That's why it was a little bit awkward. Anyway, I told you, you have to knit around two times. And then there is another gap you have to close, which is same thing supposed to be pearl but now you're knitting facing to knitting you know side right so i'm gonna show you one more time how you do it okay again you just have to you know keep knitting until the gap but this time you gotta uh, watch very carefully 
Okay. So knit, knit, and before the gap, okay, slide one stitch, then gap. Now make the extra stitch. There you go. Okay, before the gap, one stitch slide, and that stitch slide back then knit two together did you get that if not go back and then watch it again and again if you don't like this idea skip it it's gonna be tiny hole anyway right so but this is kind of optional to you know try to minimize the uh, the the hole there you go. So I actually did, you know, the front and back, make the uh, curve with the uh, the Japanese short row. Now make a rib at the very bottom, the repeat of knit one and purl one until your desired length. If the stitch count is uh, not multiple of two you can adjust it somewhere you just have to you know make knit it together and just you know decrease one stitch to make it multiple of two that's about it and after that you just have to find off Cast off, just normal, you know, bind off, you know. You just have to knit over knit stitch and purl uh, over purl stitch and then cast off. There you go. Cast off and next is knit. So knit stitch, cast off and purl, then cast off. That's about it. And now I want to talk about sleeves. First of all, you know, now all the uh, sleeve stitches on the uh, scrap yarn transfer back onto the uh, needle. And I'm going to keep that, you know, the yarn for just a security line. You don't have to. I can actually take that, you know, the yarn off either way. If it's kind of, you know, pain in neck, just take that off. So just need. Uh, one round and there's the uh, the big gap because it's not really connecting connecting right now so I want you to pick up two stitch with some the, uh, the the gap okay so just knit around until there which is the one last stitch And then you need to put the at the marker and knit up. So I'm going to actually show you. Here it comes. There you go. That's the big gap I was talking about. Okay. So knit until one last stitch. And then There you go. Marker. Knit one. Then I told you I want you to knit up two stitch What's in that gap. There you go. If you're, you know, uh, making you know big hole that's because you're knitting up don't worry about it because you know uh with the uh, the end yarn you know the whenever you weave the ends off you can actually close that little gap don't worry about it and then just knit one more round 
So need until that you know marker. After the marker, one original last stitch and two new knit up. Right? And then you know the original stitch starts. Here it comes. Take the uh, the marker off because this is not the uh, the begin. You have to do SSK slip slip knit. There you go. And why I'm doing this? Just try to minimize the uh, the big gap around that area. And now put the uh, begin marker and knit two together there. And just keep knitting until your desire length. I did about 11 rows. When to stop, um, you after knitting, you have to make rib, then I'm gonna knit uh, the wrist. Right? So it's really up to you. But if you need in too long, you can't really make, you know, wrist part. So you really got to kind of, you know, make plan ahead. And I'm actually, you know, talking about the, the hole around there. There's still, you know, little gap there. But I said, I don't worry about it. Whenever you, you know, with the, the end's tail, you just try to, you know, uh, close that gap. So don't worry about it. So anyway, keep knitting until your desired length. But after this, you have to make a rib and then rest. So you kind of have to, you know, make a plan ahead how much, how many rows you want to knit more kind of thing. Now... I need enough. So let's do the uh, the rib. There we go. And the rib is same, you know, the repeat of knit one and purl one until you your desired length. I did only nine rows because after nine rows, I want to start rest. So it's really up to you. It's done. Again, I did nine row all rib. Now let's prepare for the wrist. The wrist should be located the top of the sleeves, you know, right in the middle. So from the begin marker, you have to count stitches evenly. That's the begin marker, right? And how many stitches? It's up to you. You might have to, you know, figure it out how many stitch you need for your wrist. All you can do is, you know, just put your, you know, the, the hand in and make sure, you know, it fits you not too tight, not too loose, something like that. And if it's hard, use the uh, the bottom of the uh, the sweater, the body part, which you already you know bind off, right? And I need twenty eight to thirty stitches for my wrist. And as you can see, I am going to make opening for my thumb so you can use fingers right and I use the button hole technique 
to create the, uh, the opening. Anyway, um, whenever you decide how many stitch you need for your wrist, count from begin marker and add two markers, right? And then I will start. Now bind off except wrist stitch. So super easy. Just knit over knit stitch and purl over purl stitch and then bind off until the marker. Just binding off. And I want to tell you one thing around that, you know, marker area. Here it comes. This is close to wrist markers, right? So just keep binding off. I just want to tell you, you know, when to stop. So bind off and maybe two more. And one more left before the marker. And there you go. And I want you to remember this one stitch on the right needle that's actually belongs to outside of the wrist, not wrist stitch, right? Which means that one stitch on the right needle, you have to bind off. So remove the marker and next is purl. So make purl then one more bind off. That's what you need to know. And then during the wrist stitch, you just have to knit and purl until the other side of the marker. And I want to tell you one more thing here. Remove the marker. The last stitch belongs to wrist. Okay, so do not bind that stitch off, which means need two. So one purl, okay, which is, you know, outside of the wrist, right? So you have to make sure which is wrist, which is not. And knit one, then bind off. You know what I'm saying? However, if you make a mistake one or two stitch, it shouldn't be, you know, big deal. But, you know, you just have to be very careful. And then keep binding off until begin marker, which is already gone. Anyway, there you go. Now you cut the, uh, you know, yarn and weave ends off. There you go. You know, I don't really like the uh, ends, you know, yarn hung in there. So I'm gonna, you know, clean that up first and then start knitting rest. There you go, 28 stitch I have for my wrist. And I am going to knit around. So I'm gonna knit 28 stitch, still uh, rib. So knit over knit stitch and purl over purl stitch. And after 28 stitch, I'm going to add two new cast. 
And I want to tell you one thing: why I add new two new cast because has to be multiple of two because I want to start with knit one, then you know finish with purl one, or the other way around: start with purl one, then finish with knit one. Right, so it's really up to you. If you pick, you know, uh, odd number for the at the wrist, you might have to add only one new cast or three. Anyway, make it a multiple of two. There you go. Then connect. If you don't want to add any more. New cast, and then the the stitch count is already multiple of two. That's fine too. It's really up to you, but I recommend to add at least one or two new cast. And after this, you just have to you know. Knit round. By the way, I forgot to add the uh, new begin marker, which is a uh, center of new cast. And then after that, just making rib. You know, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, until the bottom of your thumb. So, you kind of want to wear and make sure where the the sum bottom, you know, starts, right? And then you have to actually put the uh, the markers again, just like that. You know what? There you go. That's the wrist, right? And the bottom of the thumb. Add markers. For me, that was six stitches for opening the thumb opening, right? So you have to count how many stitch you wanna, you know, bind off for some, you know, opening. I told you I am going to use buttonhole technique, and I don't wanna have tight buttonhole, so it's gonna be two rows buttonhole. Which is first row you have to bind off. Okay, so knit until thumb opening marker, and then you have to bind off the for me six stitches. For you, I don't know. And binding off, same thing, you know, knit. Over knit stitch, purl over purl stitch, and around the uh, marker area, you have to be very careful. You know, same you know uh, method as before. Around the uh, marker, just make sure uh, the which stitches you know belong to which side, kind of thing. So this is the last stitch before the marker, but the stitch you know on the right needle, that one you have to bind off too. And after that, you just knit around, and whenever you come back, the you know the place you bind off, you just add new cast. And I bind off six, so you have to add six new cast, just above the uh, you know bind off in previous row. And then after that, you know, pretend nothing happened and knit around and around until your desired length, and then cast off. There you go. This is the at the. New cast, one, two, 
three, four, five, six. Why six? Because I bind off six. So if you bind off ten, you have to add ten. Ten you cast. Then you have to make sure you know the which stitch is next and seems like pearl, so pearl, knit, pearl, knit. You know, keep making rib. And then uh, bind off, I'm gonna use stretchy bind off. You need tapestry needle because the, you know, the entrance of the, uh, the wrist has to be stretchy, right? You don't wanna tight, you know, the wrist. So cut the yarn and grab the uh, tapestry needle. This is super easy, okay? First of all, okay, try to do purl two together. Purl two together. Then pull. Then do not drop those two off yet. And knit first one. Now, knit first one. Then drop one stitch off. The which you just knit. There you go. And pull. Snag. Then pull two together again. Don't drop any stitch off. Knit one. Then drop one off. Super easy. And you just have to repeat. Pull two together. No dropping any stitch off. Knit one the first one, then drop one off. That's it. And this is going to be very stretchy. Okay? Now, almost done. I have to talk about how to do hood. As you can see, you can see my contrast color of yarn, which is pink. I am going to cut that yarn, the pink, only pink. Then take that off, which means stitch above and bottom of that pink yarn. And now you have to pick in those stitches with two different needle and you should use you know circulatory needle it's easy okay so you gotta watch so two different yarn right and i'm using you know the thinner needle to pick up because it's much easier to pick up so you gotta be very careful slowly you have to take the pink yarn off okay there's one there put the needle in the bottom one and now top one there we go put the needle in make sure it's in and then Remove the uh, pink yarn slowly. There we go. Make sure it's in. Oh, take that off. There we go. It's really hard for me because I'm uh, doing under the, uh, the, the camera. There we go. Just take your time. And you know what? You don't want to get distracted when you're doing this. So do whatever you have to do first and then start doing this. You know, I took my dog out and, you know, I gave, you know, uh, my husband dinner, 
and then everything before I started doing this and make sure nobody's gonna you know bother me seriously if you you know you're gonna go crazy if you have to you know do something middle of you know doing this anyway so now you get it you know put the needle which means you know picking up the uh, the stitch both side the bottom and top part and take the uh, the pink yarn off which creates huge gap there as you already can see you can actually see my finger right And once you're getting used to do this, it's it's easy. So the pink yarn is your guide. So pull through and you know where to, you know, put the needle in, right? Because the pink yarn is your guide. So just follow your guide. That's it. And for me, the foot stitches are 58 stitch. So top and bottom has to be same number of the uh, stitch. There you go. And do you remember what I said at the very beginning when I prepared for the, uh, the hood? I said, when you decide to add hood and prepare for hood, you can not go back because of this. You know, you have to, you know, cut that thread and then, you know, picking up the, uh, the, the, the stitch creates big hole gap. So, you know, you have to do it. So if you don't like this, you know, idea, don't do it. Okay? But it's really cute with hood, especially for kids. And after you're picking up all the stitches, please count and make sure same number of the stitch. And I add the marker there because I, you know, kind of drop one stitch there. So I'm going to fix it later. So I add the marker to make sure, you know, I don't forget. Anyway, so now two needles, two stitches. Then main, with main needle, you have to knit two together like that to close that gap so you're facing to the right side okay not the other side the other side it should be you know facing to inside of the hood so you know you have to kind of face to outside of the hood there's no hood so it's really hard but you know what I mean then need to together to close that big gap so first one, it was kind of twisted. So first and second stitch, then knit two together. That's it. And you close that big gap until the last stitch. There you go. I did. I closed it. Now, you're knitting in flat. So you turn the work. Now you're facing to inside of the hood, which is wrong side, which is pearl. Okay, please make sure about it. You know, which is inside and wrong side and which is outside and, you know, right side. So first 
ten stitch and last ten stitch, garter stitch, which means knit on both side. Okay, so I add markers. You know, the marker means ten, first ten or last ten. So knit ten, and after the marker. I'm going to make pearl because this is wrong side, which is inside of the hood. Until last ten stitches, again, and again, again. I'm sorry, but first ten and last ten has to be knit on both side, right or wrong. It doesn't matter. Has to be garter. Because I don't want to curl the edge up, and then in between, you know, you have to curl on wrong side, and you have to knit on right side, and you just you know the keep knitting until your desired length. There you go. Still wrong side, and then now garter stitch, which is knit, right? And I said, you know, knit until your desired length. You have to be very careful. If it's too short, you know, it's gonna be too tight. Around, you know, neck and head, right? I really like kind of you know the longer, fluffy, you know,、uh, hood this time. So I knit quite long. I don't use hood really, but you know it's kind of cute to have, and. For just in case, you know, if it's snow or rain, you can actually put the hood on your head. And now, I finished, and I'm going to use Kitchener cast off, okay? And you cut in half, same stitch number, okay? And you have to remember knit. Pearl, pearl knit, knit pearl, pearl knit. So knit front. The first stitch, knit front, and then off. Pearl front. And I didn't say off, so that stitch. You have to keep it. There you go. And now, pearl back, back stitch, pearl. Then it says off, so you have to drop that stitch off, and then knit back. And I didn't say off, so stay. Then come back to number one, which is knit front, right? Knit front. Then off, or stay. This time off. And pearl front. So front means you know、uh, the needle closer to you. There you go, and stay there. Next, pearl back. Then off. Then knit back, stay. The reason why I. Use the、uh, Kitchener cast off because Kitchener cast off 
there's no visible line. You know, if you uh, bind off two together like this, uh, there's line on top. Uh, you can see. Okay, but Kitchener kind of smooth surface, which I like. Okay, so you have to do this until um, all the stitches on. That's about it. And after that, you know, just wait the end block. Okay, it was long, long video, but and long knitting days, but I really like the project. Okay, so bye for now. Enjoy knitting.